Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. We just launched our AI Creators Discord community. If you're looking for a really kind of hands-on and innovative place to talk to other people making amazing things in AI, you need to join this community. Obviously, it's a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share prompts and software and tools that we're using to create really interesting use cases. We'd love to have you join and become part of the community. If you don't use Discord, there's also always the Facebook group. I'll link both of those down in the description. The education system in Japan has just made a big announcement announcement regarding how students and teachers should be treating AI. And I think this is actually really interesting. I want to cover the story because I believe there's a lot of really interesting things we can learn. They cite a lot of really interesting statistics that I believe apply to wherever you live. Of course, I think a majority of my listeners are in the United States, but over 50% of you are all around the world. And so I think this is a really applicable topic that's very interesting. But essentially, the education ministry in Japan Um, They really noted the need for students to understand artificial intelligence um, and a bunch of new guidelines they just released. And essentially, they were talking about how AI can be integrated into school and also precautions that are needed to address some of the risks that they see um, with AI. One of the things that they said specifically is that students should comprehend a bunch of the characteristics of AI, including some of its advantages and disadvantages. Of course, this makes perfect sense. Um... But they also said they specifically wanted to highlight uh, teaching students about information leakages and copyright infringements that come out of AI, two problems that we know are quite prevalent. Um, and they want you know students to know this before they actually use it. So according to some of these guidelines, they explicitly kind of state that passing off reports, essays, or any other works produced by AI as one's own is not appropriate. So obviously they are wanting their students to cite their sources. Interestingly, one of the areas they specifically highlight that they would like their students to use AI for is for English learning um, and encouraging, you know, integrating it into different group activities so students can ask about and address different perspectives. Um, They specifically said, quote, we are committed to addressing these concerns enhancing teachers, understanding um, understanding and skills and fostering a safe and effective environment for AI utilization in education. That was education minister Kaiko Nagako. Um, but essentially these guidelines are going to be shared with the boards of education and a bunch of other um, organizations. Um, but Hizanobu Muto, a school digitization project team leader at the ministry, also said, quote, I believe that it is necessary to proceed with some experimental activities based on the guidelines in schools, taking full consideration of personal data protection, security, and copyright to fully examine the outcomes and and contribute to further discussions in the future. So I think that uh, essentially over there, their ministry really just kind of uh, focused on the importance of AI literacy among teachers. Um, A lot of these guidelines are encouraging teachers as well to use fake information generated by by AI as teaching material, which I thought was super, super interesting. And the idea behind this is they want students to essentially learn how to fact check um, and how to like identify something that might sound really accurate, but AI might just be hallucinating and, you know, spit something out. So I thought that was really interesting um, that they were bringing that up and using that as a teaching, um, a teaching mechanism for their students. They also promote the use of AI to like they're obviously telling teachers to use this to reduce your workloads, use it in administrative tasks and in other areas. I think they really want um, teachers and students to start integrating this into everything they're doing so they can understand a lot of the different pros and cons. And I think the reason for that um, is because, well, I guess I'll give you a quote, but it's by Mudo. And he said, if teachers themselves become familiar with the new technologies and learn how to use it in a convenient, safe, and smart way, they're going to be able to respond appropriately in their educational activities. He said, we need to improve teachers' AI literacy and promote working uh, style reforms by conducting teacher trainings and promoting 
the appropriate use of information in public service. So I think there, what's really interesting here is that there was actually a statistic released um, that said, I believe, 44% of parents who have used ChatGPT said that they're worried or relatively worried about the use of AI chatbots by children. But that number actually increased to almost 73% for people who had not used ChatGPT. So people that haven't used some of these AI tools are actually more worried about it. And so I think that's one of the reasons why they're really focusing on getting everyone to use it, everyone to you know try it out and test it out, because um, you're going to understand the capabilities and you're not just going to you know see some article about the end of the world because of AI or um, different, I don't know, different perspectives if you don't actually have the experience of using these things. I think another interesting thing was over 49% of uh, people surveyed said they were relatively anxious um, about this. And so I think it is, you know, obviously something that that was a survey done by uh, Cyber Owl. It's a Tokyo based company. Um, they, they surveyed about 508 parents. But in any case, I think the government really plans to request that AI companies are, you know, considering improving their products from the perspective of educational use in Japan um, and, you know, filtering out different types of content and, you know, personal um, information protections they would like uh, integrated into this. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this moves forward. But I think this is very cool to see, um, you know, the Ministry of Education over in Japan, obviously taking this seriously, obviously focusing on ways that they're going to really integrate um, AI into their students learning um, and AI into their teachers teaching and the ways that that is going to help benefit um, and really set their, their country apart. We've seen uh, Japan take some big steps. They really want to be the forefront of AI. Another controversial thing that they recently said was Essentially, they, they said copyright issues and AI are not going to be enforced um, in Japan uh, because they don't want, you know, copyright to slow down the progress of AI. And so they're kind of taking the opposite approach of the EU at the moment. So I think it's going to be really interesting. I believe AI will be very big in Japan. They're obviously starting right at the education level and getting it in. And so it's going to be interesting to see how AI in Japan and also around the world kind of play into this whole education piece. And I believe the countries. Um, and places that are integrating this into the educational experience are going to be the ones that see the most innovation in AI in the future. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AIbox. AIbox is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs. Eventually, we'll integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.